You are listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, a member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. We release a new episode every Tuesday. Come join us for a new recipe and a good story. This episode of Three Kitchens Podcast is brought to you by Alberta Blue Cross. Even if you're a busy business owner with more meetings than hours in a day, you are calm and collected when your group benefit plan is taken care of by Alberta Blue Cross. Your employees can manage their own health, dental, life, and disability coverage online, anytime, on any device, making it easier for them and for you. To learn more and explore your options, head to av.bluecross.ca. Welcome to Three Kitchens. Here we are. I'm Heather. I'm here with my lovely co-hosts, Sarah and Erin. Hello. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. It's Monday morning. How are we feeling? It's Monday morning. Very, very, very tired. <laughs> I'm oh, feeling no. very Monday. <laughs> is that mm-hmm. a fair description? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it. I think it is. I slept in, even though I kept telling myself I was going to get up early. I forced myself to get up early to get used to certain routines, and I'm paying for it. Oh, mm-hmm. I'll be good next week, right? Yes, I'll totally. thank myself next totally. week. Totally, <laughs> we'll get there eventually. So I thought it might be kind of fun for a Monday morning to have a little discussion on one of our words that we or one of our questions that we like to ask guests when we have them Mm -hmm. what's something that's like a guilty pleasure from your childhood that you still enjoy eating is there something that you like to eat it's like your your go-to feel good i just i just consumed mine and thought oh well let's hear it give us an give us your example so in my house nobody likes chocolate pudding Mm. But I just love like a big old pack of that Jello pudding. Like there's mm-hmm. not homemade, nothing special, just milk and the powder. And you know which one I liked was the pistachio. I've Did you ever had that one. Ever tried the pistachio pudding? No, I've never. I didn't even know they existed. Pistachio pudding in like the Jello mix, just what? like she's talking about. Oh, I would love to try that. I didn't know there was pistachio. Yeah, it's bright green and it has nuts in it. Ah. Oh, it does have nuts in it. And I, I love the flavor, but it always made my teeth feel a little mm. fuzzy or something. I don't mm-hmm. know if it's from the nuts or what, but I always had to like brush my teeth right after yeah. because it felt, it felt weird on my teeth. But of course, I haven't eaten that in many years because I don't think I could do the milk now. But you could try that one next. I, I might have to try that one next because I ate the whole thing to myself. <laughs> And I thought to myself, this is totally my guilty pleasure. So what do you? I really like cinnamon toast. Oh. Like the stuff that you make by yourself, like with the butter? Mix the butter with the brown. I like brown sugar and cinnamon and then make your little spread. We did sometimes have that store-bought cinnamon spread, but I didn't really like it. Right, yeah. It's kind of weird. My kids are all over the cinnamon toast. I never ate that as a kid, but my husband did. And like, man, did they love that stuff. Yeah, I made that because you suggested it, Heather, and the kids and I loved it for a snack. It was really yeah. yummy. I don't make it very often, mm-hmm. but it's tasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, me, it's a, a packet of ramen. You know, I'll always go savory. And then <laughs> and I end it with a big spoonful of Nutella or almonds. Uh, what do you call it? Hazelnut spread. Ooh. like on a spoon yeah. not on the ramen not on the ramen <laughs> okay just checking <laughs> because it's always spicy ramen for me so i gotta end it with something sweet mm, right and that's like it's like plain just the packet i don't add anything into it and it's like happiness to me good feels good feels for a monday morning we need all the good feels <laughs> the good feels start the week off with something yummy okay well i have a recipe so As you guys know, and as listeners who have heard our past episode where we talked to the fire department, they have a little kind of tradition there where when you take some time off for vacation, you bring in dessert or you provide dessert for the crew. And when I have time, I make dessert for Todd to take in. And it just so happens that this month, he's got a week off coming up 
and they had planned to have a German food night where Ooh. they're going to cook German, something German for dinner. I don't know what they're cooking, but he was like, well, since we're having German food, can you make German chocolate cake? Can you make, I just love that. <laughs> it's not him who's making it. No, of course not. Why no. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. No, he, he's like, if you have time, can you, there have been times when I'm like, I cannot, I cannot bake for your holiday right. thing, go and buy yeah. something, take mm-hmm. a bucket of ice cream i don't know so i don't do it every time but when i have time anyway german chocolate cake Mm. have you guys had this cake i have Mm -hmm. i don't think i've ever eaten it or made it Ooh. Uh, and so (laughs) i looked it up and it turns out i don't know if you guys know this but it's not german at all it's an american recipe (laughs) oh dang look don't tell them (laughs) we're going with it and if anybody recognizes that it's not a German recipe, well, tough luck. They're probably still going to eat it. So just write a note and leave it on the bottom of the pie pan. So when they finish eating the pie, by the way, this actually is in German. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you why. So it's not revealed until the end. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they're going to care, honestly. No. It's called German chocolate cake, but here's the history of it. So in 1852... Uh, an English American baker named Samuel German. <laughs> Here's where the name comes from. Okay. <laughs> learning, learning. Samuel German worked for Baker's Chocolate Company. Mm. You know the Baker's Chocolate, like those blocks of chocolate you get right. to put in yes. baking? Yeah. So this is quite an old company, obviously. Mm. 1852. He made a sweet baking chocolate that was more sugar and less chocolate. It's something like 48% chocolate. It's quite a bit less than like dark chocolate. And they called it Baker's German's Sweet Chocolate after him because his name is German. So about 100 years later, the Dallas Morning News published a recipe by a Texas homemaker. Her name was Mrs. George Clay. Of course, she couldn't have had her own first name. I was going to say, wait. What was her name? I have no idea. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Mrs. George Clay, uh, and she called her recipe German's Chocolate Cake after Mm. the chocolate. Right. The Baker's Chocolate Company uh, saw the recipe, and then they started to distribute it around the country in one of their own publications or whatever. And some publication along the way just changed, dropped the apostrophe S and just called it German chocolate cake. And so that's where the name came for. It became, instead of belonging to the man named German, it's just German. Right. One of the differences in how you make it is you don't put cocoa. You're using the bar of German's chocolate and you melt it and you put that into your batter as opposed to cocoa powder right okay yeah and the other distinctive thing about this cake is the icing which is the coconut pecan um almost like a custard that's the difference it doesn't have like buttercream or like like custard meaning there's eggs in it yes and it's cooked that's what i was gonna say is it like a boiled icing Mm mm-hmm Okay, that's what I thought I remembered. That's what you remember. So I found, oh, it's on mycountrytable.com. I found the original. Mrs. George Clay's recipe. Yeah, I was, so I was looking around. I'm like, I want the actual um, recipe. And there's this big write-up about it. And this woman has recreated it using the original recipe. The frosting actually has evaporated milk, sugar, egg yolks, butter, vanilla, coconut and pecans Mm. Mm. so there you go it's i think it's fairly simple it's just that difference of the how you add the chocolate and Mm -hmm. the icing is very distinct you don't actually boil the eggs do you milk sugar egg yolks butter and vanilla in a pan cook over medium heat stirring slowly constantly until it has thickened Mm. yeah coconut and this light chocolate cake is kind of the distinctive thing about it and obviously it's german because the guy's last name is german i mean who who would have the last name german (laughs) i mean wouldn't it be funny if his if his last name was german and then he was from italy or something well he was english american apparently but you're probably right that (laughs) somewhere in his family line there must have been a german some well you know they were just handing out last Uh, they were they were when people (laughs) came to North America and so maybe his last name was something that sounded like German and they were like you're now German they were like we have too many with your name already we need somebody else now yeah (laughs) can't wait sounds delicious I'm never going on this diet am I 
No, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel the same way. Like, this is not really helping my efforts. This episode is brought to you by Park Power, your friendly local utilities provider in Alberta. Offering internet, electricity, and natural gas with low rates, awesome service, and profit sharing with local charities. In Alberta, you get to choose who to buy your internet, electricity, and natural gas from. If you switch providers, nothing changes about the delivery of these utilities to your home or business. If you have an existing contract, you're going to want to find out the terms before leaving. If you don't, then it's even easier to sign up for Park Power. You as the consumer have the choice of who you pay your bills to. Why not choose your friendly local utilities provider? Learn more at parkpower.ca. Okay, let's talk about some chocolate cake, shall we? Oh, I want to hear about this chocolate cake. Here we go. Back tell again. About, tell me what you used. German's chocolate cake. Now, I did mention in the first half that it's not actually German, right? We talked, we right. covered that bit. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. The recipe is from mycountrytable.com and it is the original recipe. And I was not able to find Mrs. George, oh, right. whatever her name was, um, of, of no name of her own, who wrote the original recipe, but this is her. This was so her. she's just Mrs. George. Well, we don't know that. Was her husband actually named George? Did we I'm just assuming. That? We don't know. Maybe her name was George. Yeah, that's very possible. <laughs> just <Okay>. in case. <laughs> so I will start off by telling you I did not locate Baker's German's chocolate. Oh. Damn it. Uh, yeah. So you, it's very hard to find in stores. You can buy it like on Amazon. Right. It's expensive probably because nobody can find it in stores. And so somebody jacks up the price mm -hmm. and charge you like $30 for a bar of chocolate. No, thank you. So mm -hmm. I did some Googling and a number of people have obviously come across this problem and then blogged about alternatives and what to substitute. So, okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, other people. Exactly. <laughs> so the consensus is you could use bittersweet and just add sugar in small amounts to the point where you like it. That seemed fussy to me. So the other option is to just <laughs> straight across sub semi-sweet chocolate. I'm like, well, then why did they make Baker's German's chocolate when they already have semi-sweet chocolate? I don't know which came first. There's bittersweet and semi-sweet? Apparently. Wow, I have not spent enough time checking out the chocolate in the, the chocolate Baking aisle. chocolate, I know. So I used semi-sweet. Cool. And let's just, we'll, we'll assume it's, these other people have done the tests and we'll mm -hmm. just count on them. Okay, this is that kind of cake where you separate your eggs and you whip up the whites mm -hmm. till they're stiff pop them in the fridge get your batter ready and then at the end you fold your egg whites right in yeah i can't remember what other cake i've made with this technique but i know it's a thing <laughs> i don't know if it's a name for it but that onde onde cake was like that too uh, i think it's probably a style of cake but i can't think of what it is i should probably say <laughs> for i made it first and i put it into cupcakes which is yes. what I gave you guys. Yeah. And I had some trouble. Some of them like completely bubble over. Other ones were concave when they came out. Oh, okay. They were just kind of a hodgepodge. Some of them worked and some of them didn't. And I was like, what happened to these cupcakes? So right. oh, weird. I did the entire recipe a second time that day. Oh, and made it three cakes. <laughs> well, I thought I have to take it to the fire hall, right? Oh, so I made okay. the three round cakes and I sent an entire i dropped off an entire cake to the fire station and the rest of us had cupcakes okay that's why when you i'm got the nice cake, cupcakes hey aaron yeah thank you the, you guys probably got the nice cupcakes the were sexy so yeah. <laughs> you could have lied and said oh perfect cupcakes <laughs> well the picture the photo i took is of the cake ah excellent because it photographed better better than the cupcakes <laughs> Okay, so you get your three pans ready if you're making the full cake. You melt your chocolate in uh, water. Sorry, how does this melting chocolate in water work? Because like in a double boiler type no, thing? No, just or... in like your glass measuring cup. Uh-huh. Boil water, uh -huh. put it in the cup, put your chocolate in it, and then set it aside and it will melt in the hot water. I have never done that before. Yeah, well, thank you for explaining that to new. me. Mm -hmm. That's all new. And then you stir it a couple times and you let it cool until okay. you're ready to put it in. So then you're going to beat your egg whites, as I mentioned. 
uh, in your hand mixer, then put those in the fridge until you're ready to use them. Now you're putting in flour, salt, baking soda, sift that all together and set that aside. <laughs> you're doing it all in pieces, right? Mm -hmm. So then you're going to cream your butter and sugar together until it's creamy. Add your egg yolks one at a time, mix them in, then your melted chocolate and your vanilla. Okay. So now you've got this batter that does not have your flat, like your dry ingredients yet and does not have your egg whites yet. Right. Yes. Okay. Then you, you're adding buttermilk and your dry ingredients alternated. Mix right. Mix those in. Then uh, gently fold in your beaten egg whites and you're good to go. So it's a bit of a process. Yeah, it is a process. Yeah. A little involved. And it's a big recipe because you're making three nine-inch cakes out of it. Yeah, that's a big recipe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the thing that makes it German's chocolate cake mm -hmm. is the, the frosting, which mm -hmm. is the American word for icing. <laughs> so we call it icing. It is a cooked icing. So you're putting milk, sugar, egg yolks, butter, and vanilla in a saucepan and thicken it over medium heat, which took about, I'd say about 10 minutes or so. Uh, then take it off the heat, add in coconut and pecans, pecans. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you guys like to say it. I say pecans. And then you're frosting between each of the layers yeah. and the top, but not around the sides. It's like, uh, what do you call that when it's bare around the, there's a name for yeah. like that. I think we stumbled make on it, this word Make again. it cake or something? Half I don't know. <laughs> it's half dressed. I don't know. Depends on if you're an optimist or a pessimist, whether it's <laughs> half naked or half dressed. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, true. <laughs> okay. And that is it. I mean, it's a little involved, a little time consuming. I think the cake baked for about 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah. I had to, I only have two pans that size. So I did two. Oh, dang. Turned them out, did the third. So oh, wow. Me. But my yeah. oven also, I don't think would have fit three. I have right. kind of a smallish oven. So yeah, that's hard to evenly distribute. And how did there. the cakes Ooh. turn out compared to the cupcakes? Good. Yeah. Oh, okay. the cakes turned out great. They popped out nice and clean. Yeah. I wonder why. Wonder what the difference was. Then I. I don't know. I think sometimes cakes stick like it. It doesn't work in the um, paper sometimes for, oh. with cupcakes. It was one of those things where I was just like, "Oh, screw it!" And actually, the second time, because I had just made it, the yes. second time I barely had to read the recipe. Like I just double checked my quantities, but I knew the process already, so I just I whipped it up really fast. So I think if you've made yeah. it a couple of times, you probably the whole process of it would go super quick. Yeah. 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 Well, I think you should make it again. I would say all the effort was very worth it. Very decadent. It was a fantastic Rich. cake. Mm -hmm. I love the cake. The yeah. cake. Yeah. I thought the, the cake, cake recipe is fantastic. Yeah. All those steps and all that mixing in your egg whites carefully and, and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. I mean, it was just so fluffy. <laughs> it wasn't and dense moist. at all. The yeah. moisture yeah. content was amazing. Like it just, mm -hmm. yeah. The, the cake was fantastic. Heather. Mm -hmm. Just, I agree. My and favorite. not sweet. It was not very sweet. No, mm -hmm. but, and it also wasn't overly rich. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. too chocolatey, which. No, and I think that's what threw me off. I thought it was nice and chocolatey and like coconutty and it had the pecans. But then every time I taste something like that, I usually taste that on a denser cake. Mm -hmm. But this was a fluffier cake with all those good flavors of that, that rich flavor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, And that's what threw me off. As soon as I took the first bite, I'm like, what am I eating here? That's because of your, your uh, whipped egg whites. Egg whites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The method might have been a little bit laborious, but I think that's totally worth it when you're making a cake. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it all comes down to how you mix it all together, I would say. Yeah. 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 I didn't super care for the icing. What did you guys think of it? I loved it. Oh. I loved it. I loved all of it. The coconut, the pecans, the... Hmm. I liked the coconut oh, and the pecans in it. I felt like the icing could have been not as thick, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like it could have been thinner if that's. I think if it had been much thinner, it would have it run would have out. Run it would have been yeah. hard to ice the layer cake. Maybe the cupcakes would have been. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It was. Meh. I just didn't think the flavor of it was anything amazing. I was kind of like, yeah, it's okay. I thought it was delicious. Oh. It was very delicious. I don't know. I think maybe it's that evaporated milk. 
that mm. it's a different flavor and i think that also gives it that different texture yeah as well that i did i didn't really like but but that's okay my family loved it it was my first light chocolatey cake i don't know how to explain it usually i'm i'm a big chocolate fan right so mm-hmm. was it, that was the only thing that threw me off but i thought it was delicious why not have a light chocolatey cake yeah yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, Yeah. I could have eaten a lot more of these. Mm -hmm. Heather only delivered four cupcakes to my house. Yeah. And the neighbor kid was over at our house and I didn't realize it. And the kids came in, oh, we have to get... And I said, oh, have your cupcake from from Heather. It's our first three kitchens, you know, treat. And the kids were like, yay. And Dan and I take a bite out of ours and the boys take a bite out of theirs. And then the neighbor kid comes around the corner is like, oh, can I have a cupcake? And I was like, oops. Uh, we only had four. Sorry. <laughs> so now I'll be making extra portions. You too, Sarah. It's Aaron's adopted child. And now he yeah. knows that food comes from outside my house. Too, <laughs> you're going to have to up your portion count. I didn't <laughs> know. We are now a family of five. <laughs> I, you know what? And I probably had plenty. My kids <laughs> ate quite a number of them. Mm. the icing so I did one and a half times the icing recipe because Mm. I was doing the cake and the cupcakes right so I did the full cake plus 16 cupcakes Mm -hmm. and there were a few extra but they were all the ones that had like we still ate the cake because it's still delicious cake but they weren't worth icing (laughs) yeah and that was as much icing as I had. So I'm disappointed I shared it really with anybody. Yeah. I really liked I really liked the the light and fluffy and the flavor in the cake. I thought it was just bang on. I would definitely I will definitely make this cake again. Yeah. I maybe will put something else, some different kind of icing on it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Something chocolatey, maybe? Yeah. Like maybe something a bit more rich chop dark yeah. chocolate. I think we're so used to that. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why, right? Or like a cream cheese chocolate icing. Oh, that sounds really tasty. like make it rich because you can mm. get away with that with the cake being so much lighter. You can really go overboard. <laughs> Did the yeah. coconut go into the cupcake batter again? No, just the icing. And that's the signature. That's what this cake is supposed to so be about. Like, yeah. so chocolate and coconut are the main. Yeah. The chocolate mm. icing with Maybe. coconut that would be delicious. I think. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Just toast mm-hmm. some coconut and sprinkle it on there and mm-hmm. call it pretty. Mm. And tasty. Mm-hmm. Baking, yeah. such a Baking is yes. a bit tricky sometimes. Oh, yeah. That's mm-hmm. why I like it when you guys do it and I get, I get to eat it. That's okay. We like that you make complicated recipes that we don't really <laughs> want to try and we get to eat them. <laughs> yeah, so it all works out. <laughs> And now for the fine print. Join us over on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest, and on our website at threekitchenspodcast.com. And remember, when you like, follow, subscribe, and review, it helps more people find us. Thank you so much for listening. Wait. What was her name? I have no idea. Oh, that's nice.